All right, hey there viewers. So, do I got a fun one for you today? So, I got a 2005 Honda Civic and I'm uh, swapping a motor into this thing. This will be the second motor that's getting. So, I, I didn't work on this before, so one of my co-worker who put the motor into this, uh, he is away. So, I uh, get the opportunity to uh, put another motor in for him. So, what happened is, oh, no, oh, let me just close the window because it's kind of noisy roll up the window ma manual windows here so what happened is uh original motor uh from what i'm getting from my shop foreman is uh the first motor uh he branded low on coolant and it got super hot uh so because so, these uh these civics have uh are, are prone for head gasket leaking so we got to use motor and apparently the uh the the record that we got the used motor from said this motor was good uh but we suggested like hey what if we take the head gasket uh replace the head gasket on the used motor and they're like no don't do anything to it or it's gonna avoid the warranty on the on the used motor that they're providing us so put the motor in customer drove it ran it low on coolant overheated and uh yeah we're doing the motor again with the uh the warranty that the uh, wrecker is giving us so they're paying for the labor and uh providing us with another used motor so also we uh we're not allowed to take it apart and put another head gasket on on that used motor that they gave us because it also voids the warranty so this 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 motor we're putting in might as well have another head gasket leak and we're doing the same thing but because the wrecker won't allow us to replace the head gasket on it uh because it's going to avoid the warranty what we're going to do is we're just going to stick another motor into it. And if it does the same thing, then uh, we're doing it all over again. So that's, uh, I feel like that's kind of dumb. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're putting used motors in, but we're known that these motors are, are prone to head gasket leaks. And, uh, you know, the record, wrecking company that sent us the uh, used motor doesn't allow us to do it because it voids the warranty. So, yeah, I don't know. That's the <laughs> this is what we got to deal with. Uh, but anyways, we... Uh, we're putting a used motor into it, so I'm going to start draining the oil. Uh, this is also a manual, so it might be easier. I, I don't know. I'm just going to probably drop the engine and transmission all at the same time. And then cherry pick it off the uh, transmission and then, uh, or, yeah. Anyways, let's get started. Oh, yeah, be before I get started, some of you might uh, might be wondering. 285,279 kilometers. And uh, if you're wondering how much that is in miles, I think it's roughly around 175,000 miles. But yeah, let's get right to it. All right, so I removed the exhaust, some brackets, some covers and stuff. Uh, also, I drained, drained the coolant, All right? Drained the oil. Uh, I think I'm just gonna drop the engine and transmission out with the subframe, and then I'm just gonna cherry pick the engine off of it. But I think I gotta get rid of all the accessories, maybe the AC. I'm gonna see if I can recover the AC and see. All right, so it's kind of noisy, but uh... Looking at what I got to do before I drop the engine, uh, gotta remove the power steering pump, and then I'm just gonna put it up on the strut tower there. Uh, it's nice that the steering rack is part of the or mounted to the body and not to the subframe, so that's nice. Uh, I'm gonna recover the AC, remove the AC lines. The AC line can stay here while uh, the engine transmission drops out of the bottom. Take the uh, slave cylinder off of that clutch clutch fork there. I already disconnected the battery just in case and then uh, yeah deal with all the uh, the wiring harness remove the air box and I think we should be able to just drop the uh, engine and transmission out okay well while, while we're waiting for the AC machine let me uh, let's let's see what we're all doing in the shop today so over here we got a uh, we got a Ford Fiesta and this our apprentice here is uh, doing a transmission on it how you how you doing? I, I don't want to point it at your ass, but I end up pointing it at your ass. Thank you. But yeah, he's he's doing a transmission on this uh, Fiesta here, and let's 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 just go over here. The the guy two 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 bays beside me, right? Two bays beside me. He he's also doing a motor on a Honda Element, as you can see. And then let, let's let's go over here. There's another Civic over here. Uh, and he's doing a he, he's doing a head gasket over here, and then uh, yeah I think that's that's pretty much the day. There's other stuff coming in, but we gotta stagger our work. 
Uh, back to my hoist. Ah, uh, your box of, box of parts. So yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on in the shop today. Oh look, oh, still recovering, almost almost there. All right, so I've done pretty much what I can do in the last hour because it's already four o'clock. Well, it's past four o'clock, so I'm gonna continue on with this tomorrow morning. But the only things I did was, you know, take the AC lines off. I plugged up those uh, two holes there on the AC compressor, removed the alternator, removed the power steering pump, put them on the side there. Uh, the air box right now I just work my way around these this harness and then I'm just gonna flip it over and you know the harness is gonna stay on the cowl there uh, but yeah then uh, disconnect the coolant lines to disconnect the uh, shift shifter linkages slave cylinder some you know O2 sensor wires and yeah then I can uh, drop the uh, subframe uh, but I need that table and my coworker over there is using that table so I gotta figure out another way to take this engine out. But yeah, if you wanna do your steering rack, this is the perfect time to do your steering rack because it's just, you know, your bolts are right there and you can just slide it out the side. But anyways, I'll see you tomorrow morning. All right, so today's gonna be a kind of a interesting day because all the tools that I need to use is uh, being used as there's, the, uh, there's the table that I was gonna drop the whole engine transmission out on it. Uh, this customer is actually paying for a new engine. Well, it comes in pieces, so you got the cylinder head in that box, you got the short block in the box, and then the head gasket kit. So, I don't know. Th apparently, this customer really wants to keep his element for another like 20 years or something. So, he put a, put a new motor into it, or we're putting a new motor into it. And then over there, they're doing I don't know why he's got the tranny out of the Honda Ridgeline, but he's got it out there. Um, and then the Ford, the Ford Fiesta that the apprentice is doing a transmission on it. Not, not too sure about what the story is with that thing. Apparently, this customer went to the Ford dealership, and then I, I thought that she thought there was like a extended warranty on the uh, transmission because of a bulletin or something like that. But they were said they said no, and you know they quoted them a transmission. So I guess one of well, this customer is one of the employee's friend or family or something like that. So they decided to bring it to us so we're gonna put a transmission into it for for this customer so that's i guess that's what's going on in the shop with all the jobs right now so a lot of big jobs our, our apprentice so our apprentice put the transmission in and then uh, let's see what the, well, the original code is for transmission friction element b stuck on i guess that's what the code was I thought that code was, uh, they had like the extended warranty. What year is this thing? What year is this thing? 11, I think. 11? Oh, I thought they extended a year to 10 years, but I guess it's out of warranty. Yeah, anyways. All right, so I already got the engine off with the cherry picker. We actually got a different uh, cherry picker. Um, but yeah, uh, it's separated. The only thing that I uh, came across is I it, the, the boot kind of popped off the, uh, the CV there, so... It looks like somebody's has uh, put a zip tie. They use a zip tie. So zip ties aren't very strong to hold that boot in place. So I'll probably just find a new boot clamp and uh, uh, put that on or put that back on. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, i uh, got to transfer over the uh, flywheel and the clutch over to the uh, used engine over there and whatever I got to swap over. So yeah, not too bad. Uh, yeah, and then uh, bring you back once I put it back all together. Right, so, uh, good thing I checked before I mounted this onto the tranny because this, this engine is locked up. <laughs> you can't even turn it. So, yeah, always make sure you uh, check your uh, used engine before uh, you actually mount it or put it back in the car because it is... It won't turn. Hey, uh, can you hold the engine here? Let me, let me try to crank it. Here, let me try to turn it. Yeah, it's seized. Good thing I checked before I put it together here. Hold it, I can't. Can I get this on video? <laughs> yeah, it's it's locked up. I already, that's that's the one I took out. This is the one I'm putting in. Locked up. So yeah, this is why I hate used engines from wreckers. <laughs> I gotta I gotta take the, the clutch and everything off again. Oh my god. Here's a this is a good example of what happens when you go used compared to uh my coworker over there doing 
uh, putting a brand new motor. So a customer who opted to go with a used motor, you know, the cheaper option, uh, where that other customer over there was going to spend the money to put a brand new engine into it, you know, maybe last last the the rest the life of the the, the vehicle. These, these two cars are probably pretty much close to the same year uh, when they were you know manufactured. So yeah, 2005. I think that one might be 2008, maybe something like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean you know two motors there already. We're waiting for a third one. Might as well <laughs> might might even be a fourth fourth used engine that we might be getting. So that that's the risk you take for. Uh, uh, going a, the used route and uh, they only provide three months uh, warranty so this one was actually just pretty close to uh, having the warranty expire but you know use the the company that provides us this motor will probably most likely try any way to decline the uh, the warranty anyways when it's near the end or any kind of excuse but yeah just to show you the the, the, the things you run into when you put a used motor and the risk you take uh, going their used route compared to the new route where he's putting them together. Also, it also depends on who's also building your, your motor too. What happens when that warranty expires? Well, customers already paid for the labor, right? The company who provides us the motor already, already, received, already received the money for that used motor. So what are you going to do, right? But I'm pretty sure our, our, our management will do something about it. Uh, just for you know customer service satisfaction kind of deal um but yeah if it, if it was out of the warranty and the company who sent us the motor you know says hey there's no warranty it's out of warranty and they're not gonna warranty that engine after the three months right i mean what are you gonna do right it's gonna come out of somebody's pocket uh, most most likely out of the company's pocket and they're just gonna pay me to put in put it in anyway so yeah, and then whoever's going to pay for the used motor again, I don't know. But yeah, in my opinion, if you can get a new one, I would go with a new one compared to a used one. Same thing, if I had a 4Runner, you know, 15 years later and there's something something up, I, I'd, I'd put a brand new motor in my my 4Runner. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's my opinion. So yeah, anyways, tomorrow I'll be working on a Honda Clarity. We're going to be replacing an EV battery. I actually volunteered to do it because I'd never done one before and I wanted to make a... A video for you guys so I'm gonna be working over there because the, the hoist this hoist uh, I can't clear the uh, apparently the, the my, my shot foreman said you can't clear the battery with the uh, with the type of hoist that we have on this side so I'm gonna be using that hoist over there so that's a uh, that's gonna to be tomorrow's video so you know I'll probably put this video up before that other video so yeah actually I'm kind of excited to do that uh, EV battery for the first time Let's let's go ahead and take a look. We're, it's early in the morning and our computers are down, so we can't do anything. We can't locate jobs, so that's that's the morning for me here. But I just want to show you how nice this uh, this engine looks like when you get brand new. Look at that new timing system, new camshafts, man. It's like brand spanking new. But yeah, so new versus used. Actually, let me uh, bring you over to the the, the motor that got took taken out. So a lot of these customers, they usually come come in, and uh, usually if it's like a major repair, they, they bring it to the dealership, and they came from somewhere else. <clears throat> so we were just standing around and looking at this block, and like, hey, it has all the markings of a used motor. And of course, there's the heat tab, right? And then there's the heat tab on the cylinder head. And I guess the center part of it already melted out, right? So it's being overheated. This one's also melted out. So yeah. So that, that that this this Honda element has been overheated. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know who who put this motor in. Maybe the shop that they they've been going to or whatever. But yeah, usually so when something like this happens, customer brings it to the dealership, and then you know now they they're paying for a brand new engine. And uh, yeah, that 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 also concludes my theory of going use the used route and then going the new route because you're gonna eventually put a new engine in it anyways. It might get you get you by for a little bit, but yeah. So here here's our our, our engines. It's a uh, um, we get it from the same wrecking company. Um, they don't they don't put heat tabs, right? I, I doubt they even check it either. <laughs> so because that that one's all locked up, so they don't put heat tabs on the uh, motors that they sent us. Right, 
see no no heat tabs they usually put it like here right nothing on the cylinder head they don't they, they don't even tear the engine apart they just give us the whole entire motor with with the harness which is great because the harness that's in the car for that motor was the, all the connectors were broken so i was going to reuse this harness and then just run it into the firewall and uh, reconnect everything because the connector are are good because they don't all of them were uh so hard and brittle and they they basically break so i was going to use this harness so they sent us a whole motor with the harness and you know uh yeah that's basically it but we are waiting for a third motor uh uh, might be coming today <clears throat> don't know but i'm gonna there's a giant box over there with the ev battery and i'm putting in a honda clarity so yeah oh i gotta gotta get myself a, a thumbnail one engine two engine three engine all used <laughs> i gotta i gotta floor mat this time all right so gonna gotta get this all done i gotta finish by today that's the plan uh transfer all the parts whatever i need and then i uh, get this thing back in the car so then I gotta move on to other jobs. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, make sure this engine rotates. Yep, and it rotates. And I feel compression. Oh, I can hear it too. You can hear it out of the exhaust. Yeah, you can hear it. Oh, yeah. So, engine rotates, so I'm good. All right, so that's the uh, clutch installed. The, what do you call this? The clutch alignment tool moves freely, right? So that should um, make it easier for me to uh, mount it to the transmission. So I put a little grease on the uh, input shaft of the transmission and uh, yeah. Yeah, so you just want to make sure it moves freely. If it's crooked, then you have a tough time moving this in and out, so. All right, so I'm gonna do this before I forget. Here's the part number for the, the band for the CV boot. So I wanna do that before I mount that, that engine back on here, so. Yeah, just in case I forget, that's, that's installed. What I do is I just use that to put it on top of that. And then I use my needle nose to, you know, twist it tight. And then I flatten it down by, you know, hitting at it and uh, pushing, pushing this part down so it's flat. So yeah, you don't really actually need the tool for that. You can just, you know, find your own way to do it without the tool. All right, so I got the uh, motor mounted to the transmission and back onto the subframe. And you're probably wondering why I got the valve cover off. Uh, one, I can actually take a look inside and see how it looks like and it looks pretty, pretty good. Not bad. Um, the other thing is, um, I'm gonna replace the valve cover gasket because from what it looks like, it's been leaking. You know, like, like the, the, the company that we get it from, they send us these motors, you know, they pressure wash it and makes it all look nice and everything, but there are telltale signs that it's been kind of leaking oil. So, and, and the valve cover gasket was pretty hard when I pulled it off. So, uh, yeah, so I'll be replacing that. Not only the, am I doing that, but the original used motor that's over there, a uh, customer has paid for the timing belt and water pump replaced on it. So I have to swap that over to this engine because you know customers already paid for it and uh yeah so we got to put it got to swap those that, that's those two those parts over to the this used engine so that's what i'm doing so i'm going to swap swap all that parts over whatever customers has already paid for for the original used engine and then uh yeah then this thing can go back into the car so it's a good thing to you know take these things off and uh, like check uh, especially this water pump is actually leaking so if i had to or if i were to uh you know, as a as an, a complete engine, stuck it in the car without removing the timing cover and everything, and inspecting the timing belt. Uh, yeah, you might be uh, running out of coolant or leaking coolant when, once that thing's running, and you know you get an overheating issue again. So it's good to uh, pop this thing off and inspect. Also, there's a lot of water in here because I guess they pressure washed it. This is this is water. See? Oh, there it goes. Drips. <laughs> so they they most likely pressure washed everything to make it look nice on the outside. So. Yeah, anyways, I'm going to swap over all the parts that are new on the uh, original used engine, and then, uh, yeah. Everything's swapped over, just make sure everything's all timed. There's a little mark here, there's an arrow behind there that you gotta line up with. You can't see it because the belt is in front of it. There, you gotta line that up. I don't know if it... There you go. So you gotta line that up. And then you got the line here, the line here, and it's supposed to line up with the cylinder head. So that's uh, top dead center. You can double check by 
checking the uh, movement in the rocker arms. All right, and they all move, so that's top dead center. And then, uh, yeah, you rotate it twice around and then make sure that all the marks line up again. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So new water pump. This is a new timing belt from the other, other, uh, other engine. So yeah, I'm gonna put everything back together and this thing's ready to go back in the car. A little bit of a part swapping because this valve cover is way cleaner than the one that came off of this engine that's on the floor there. So, but it's a shame because that, that other engine over there, it's, it's super clean inside. If I were to like fix this one, I would fix definitely fix this one. Look how clean it is. Like it's it's getting its regular oil changes, not even any varnish. But yeah, if, if, if there's something wrong with this, we'll just probably slap a head gasket on that one and put that one in the car to you know get it going. But that's what it, this one looks like compared to that one. So that one's really clean. Man, everything's all uh, put back together. I just gotta fill up the coolant and uh, see if there's any oil in there and then I'm gonna change the filter in it and put new fresh stuff in the uh, in the engine. Uh, there you go. Back in the correct spot. So yeah, let me go grab some coolant and get some uh, get an oil filter for this thing. There's oil in it. Uh, pull out that oil filter out there. Alrighty, first first start this is where we find out if I forgot anything hey we have a check engine light I'm gonna see what that check engine light is but it does run okay yeah I already found it I forgot to plug in the cam sensor I'm not just gonna clear the code. Do we have a radio code? No, no sticker on the radio code. I gotta put in the radio code. Scan. Hondu. Do 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 do. So yeah, there's a tag on this um, this used motor. It says 198,000 kilometers is what this motor has. It's a Civic. Uh, let's go system selection. I just need to go to the engine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cam sensor. That's that's the the one I forgot to plug in. So that should be it. Clear codes. Now I just gotta run this thing until it bleeds the cooling system. Done. Okay, start her up again. Uh, yep, no engine light now. And uh, we're just gonna bleed the cooling underneath the hood over there. So yeah, I guess that's, that's pretty much it for the video. So stay tuned for the next video where I'm gonna do the Honda Clarity uh, battery. So thanks for watching.